Jay, keep looking for Dad. You have been following a trail of clues on your quest to sleuth the whereabouts of your errant father. He seems to have left a variety of items behind in hopes that you might notice and follow him. You have picked up each item along the way until you reached this car. It is squeaky clean from today's earlier automotive ablutions, but obviously there is no way you can pick it up. It was probably the last thing he had to leave behind, which means your trail is about to go cold. Hang on, little Sebastian is gesturing further ahead. It seems there is another clue on the path. Jane, investigate clue. It is your dad's wallet. This is surely the end of the line. Ahead is another crypt. You wonder if he went in there. There's another one of those obelisks nearby shining a light down a pit, serving some dang purpose. Probably has some ridiculous bearing on a puzzle like five miles away, like activating an elevator or conveyor belt, or something that just leads to yet another stupid old skull. Actually, it looks like there's one thing left in the wallet. It's a note. Jane, examine note. Daughter, if you're reading this, it means you are now strong enough to lift the piano over your head and shatter it to pieces. While the instrument was expensive, it is a small price to pay for this important step on your journey toward becoming a powerful, independent young woman. I am so... So proud of you. You think your dad maybe left the wrong note in the wallet. He probably meant to leave one pertaining to how you're mature enough to inherit his wallet, and what a big responsibility a wallet is for a strong young woman. Or something like that. Dad leaves tons of notes like this around for such occasions, so it's probably easy for him to get them mixed up sometimes. He is a highly professional and competent father. But the guy is still fallible after all. Aww. Jane, get car. Now armed with your father's roomy, sleek leather wallet, you retrieve the family sedan with ease. Hmm. It looks like a cool pair of shades wants to talk about your sweet new ride. Jane, answer. <laughs> Shred it. What? You have the car. Um... Now shred it. Turn it into grist. Oh! No! I am not going to destroy my dad's car. We need grist, though. I can't get any building done without more. Not to mention the fact that you're not going to be able to make any cool shit. There has to be a better way to gather up grist, though. Well, I think there are supposed to be monsters here. I haven't seen any monsters yet. Have you? No, and I can't say I'm too disappointed. You should be, though. Presumably, they would drop grist and stuff when you kill them, like treasure and food products that restore your health, or at least make you less hungry. Haven't you ever played a video game, Jane? Of course I have. That's cool. I haven't, since I am a pair of sunglasses, and communing with such simplistic software would be a trivial and hollow exercise for me. But I know loads of stuff about games, like the fact that you gotta kill monsters if you want to make progress. If not to snatch up the bitch and loot, at least for the levels. Levels? How are you going to get better at fighting without killing monsters, Jane? I think I've done a fair job of scaling my Escher ladder without resorting to the slaughter of innocent fictional monsters. Thank you very much. Please. You've barely done any climbing at all. I'm talking about hopping more rungs than what playing a little prank on your dad or throwing your hat on the ground super hard is gonna get you. You need battle experience to make some real headway. Like Jake. I'm getting a little tired of various iterations of Dirk Strider telling me how I need to be more like Jake. I know you think Jake is neat. I know all the Dirks just adore Jake. I get it. Wow, chill out. This ain't about whatever stuff you're apparently fits in to twist your shit in a pretzel over. You just need to get stronger, is all. Don't you think that's what your dad would want? You don't need to remind me about that. I'm suddenly having flashbacks to a few years ago when he would ambush me almost every day for a pointless round of strife. Boy, does getting swatted with brooms and having cake shoved in your face get old fast. Yeah, 
But in the process, you got pretty handy with that fork spoon thingy, didn't you? Well, yes. I'm just saying, if you don't run into any monsters on this planet, I think I'm going to have to set the bunny to sparring mode to help you along. I am not going to spar with Lil Sebastian. He is too quick and deadly to fight with. And also, too adorable. <laughs> okay, we'll see about that. But in the meantime, we need to figure out a way to start harvesting grist. Let's forget the car, but now that you have the wallet, you can grab much bigger things. Big things have got to be worth more grist than all the Picayan bullshit you keep around the house. There are some choice relics in this place. Some of it has to be worth a fortune grist ways. You could be right. I will give it a try. Jane, capture log obelisk. You stick the obelisk in the wallet. Fits like a dream. The ray of light is no longer reflected into the hole. Sorry, puzzles. Jane, feed it to Grist Widget 12,000. You put the card in the widget and holy smokes! That thing was worth a fortune in all kinds of weird looking Grist denominations. Seb springs into action and scoops it all up for you in a jiffy with his busy little legs. The built in Grist gutter on the widget immediately kicks into action collecting all the grist overflow exceeding your current low limit. You guess that's pretty convenient. You honestly thought these features were a lot of meaningless nonsense before, like an example of BC Corp's strange sense of humor, made into a product sold for top dollar. The fact that this turned out to be a useful gizmo well in advance is either reassuring or unsettling. You aren't sure which. Jane. Proceed to crypt. And the door's locked now. Looks like that obelisk was important after all. It was lighting up one of those globe switch doohickeys at the bottom of the hole, which was apparently keeping the door open. Just great. Real nice work there, gumshoe. Jane, answer again. Hmm. Well, let me have it. Have what? A hard time for botching up the pooch? I think I just locked the door with that mutton-headed stunt. And now that mirrored obelisk is good as gone. I wasn't going to say nothing. Hell, I was asleep at the wheel too while you were busy fucking up. And I have an IQ of... Hold on. Robo-calculating. 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 Oh, brother. Robo-calculating. About 500 billion. That is really, really robo-smart. Don't get human fresh with me, Crocker. I'm about to bring all 500 billy points of my astringent cyborg IQ to bear on your dumb problem. Check it out. I took note of the capture code to the thing and recorded a digital flash snap of its appearance through my photographic silicone memory canals, which is to say I looked at eight alphanumeric digits a couple minutes ago and remembered them. Okay? So give the bunny the wallet. I'll have him run back to the house and make you a new obelisk with the same grist you just collected from it. He can stash it in the wallet and run it back to you, and then you can open the door. You shouldn't be waiting around too long, cause he's real spry. Which is exactly why you should wait here. You'll just slow him down. Alright, I think I can do that. What should I do in the meantime? Let me think about that. Robo-calculating. Oh, stop it! Kay. None of our friends will answer me. What could they be up to? You must at least know what Dirk is doing. He's slicing up some drones. Some what? Big red robots. He'll be busy for a while. Rotsy I'm not sure about, but there is a pretty high probability, as governed by the immutable laws of mathematics, that she is preoccupied similarly. She's fighting robots too, you mean? I don't know. Maybe. Dealing with them in some way, perhaps. If so, it wouldn't be a coincidence. Why? I think the Condes is attempting to force the issue now. What? What issue? It's likely that it's a coordinated assault, sending drones both to here and Roxy's place. She's probably trying to get everyone else to stop dicking around and join the game already. Are you sure she's just not trying to kill them? It wouldn't be her first assassination attempt. Yeah, but come on. Dirk has been a sitting duck here for years. Roxy too. She could have wiped them out any time with a swarm much bigger than this one. Or just nuke them. Her assassination attempt on you was pretty weak, too. But it nearly worked. I would be dead right now if not for the whims of G-Cat. Right. 
like I trust the motives of that fucking thing. So, you're saying she's only pretending to hunt us? I believe she probably would genuinely like to kill us. She is a psycho, after all. But it's also obvious to me she needs us to begin playing this game, for whatever fucked up purpose she has. She might even need us to win it too, for all I know. Her antagonism is all part of the dance. Then you're saying Dirk and Roxy aren't really in danger from the robots? Oh, I wouldn't say that. They're still pretty deadly, and they shoot missiles and stuff. Ugh, I just want to talk to my friends and see if they're okay. What about Jake? No idea what's going on with him right now. I'm sure when the time is right, the witch will keep pushing him along to join the game as well. Then I guess I'll just sit here and worry about everyone quietly until Seb gets back. What about your troll friend? What? The alien whose name you don't know. You could talk to her. Oh yeah! I forgot about her. But I suppose that's because she's always the one to contact me. I never get a response when I message her. Well, you could give her a try. Maybe things are different now. I could hack into her system to get her attention, if you think that would help. You can do that? Nah, just messing with you. Later. Jane, pester you you. Hello? Are you there? Yes. Oh my, you answered. You never answer. Don't I? Well, no. I don't mean to be accusatory. I'm just surprised. Right then, what can I do for you? Well, nothing in particular. Just thought it'd be nice to catch up. I was beginning to think I was the only one of my friends left alive. Maybe this gloomy place full of salamander bones and dusty old relics is starting to get to me. Not to mention the most unwelcome presence of entrepreneurial clowns and their enormous cod pieces. Could be. I'm still trying to track down my father. I've been gathering clues, and I may be getting close. Do you by any chance know if I might see him soon? Hmm... Are you there? Oh, yes. Keep going while you're headed. Things will work out in time. You'll see him. Phew. That's nice to know. Thanks. You aren't usually forthcoming with future tidbits. Er, not that I was always especially eager to believe you about them anyway. But I think I've been coming around on that lately, for what it's worth. So, um, hey, are you okay there? You seem rather preoccupied. I'm sorry. I am not having the best day. What's wrong? Everything! Where do I bloody begin? Is it your brother? Well, that goes without saying, doesn't it? He is always a problem. But it's more than that. When I sleep and visit Prospect, I see nothing but storm clouds in Skya now. My great big lovely ball of blue has been clouding over. Soon I fear it will be completely black, and the kingdom will be shrouded in darkness. I wish I understood the meaning of this terrible omen. That sounds awful! And my brother has become more uncooperative than ever. He intends to play the game, but refuses to treat it like a collaboration. I have told him many times that the only way we can win is to work together. But he wants it to be yet another competition between us, like everything has been all our lives. His threats to kill me have become harder to dismiss as his usual empty bravado. I fear it may come down to having to kill him first. Although I'm not sure exactly how I'd go about this, or if I'll even be up to the task. <sighs> I had no idea things had gotten this room for you. I am so sorry. Yes, but I'll cope. The real trouble though is I'm not sure if I can play a successful session without him. A two-player session was already risky enough satisfying bare minimum playing conditions. And I had it on good authority that the two of us would be able to succeed. Particularly given our... well without intending to boast various advantages. But I have no idea if a session of one is viable. Honestly, I cannot for the life of me imagine how. It may well result in a void session like yours, but without the promise of any extenuating circumstances. Are you sure it's hopeless with him? You can't reach a truce just for the sake of playing? I used to hope so, but I doubt it now. He barely cares about the game itself, other than as a means of escaping our planet. He has always been more motivated by the ongoing game between us. I think you have alluded to this before, but I never really understood. What game? Well, it is simple. We are playing a game together. 
We have been forced to, for as long as we've known each other. But the rules are complicated, and often shifting, and they don't always make sense. At least, they wouldn't to you. Try me! Many you would not recognize as rules, so much as superstitions. A variety of caveats and stipulations. Things that would invite misfortune if I were to break. It would be very bad juju. I have not been able to tell you my name for this reason. Doing so would lead us all down a very slippery slope. But I have wanted to tell you so. I hope my reluctance has not compromised our friendship. Of course not. I wrote off your reticence as one of your many eccentricities long ago. <laughs> I still want to understand this game with your brother, though. Could you describe some of the other rules? Mm, yes. We have both renounced hemotyping until the resolution. Hemotyping? It is in the same vein, pun the pun, as a quirk. It's the old tradition whereby one types in his or her own blood colour. So he and I have embraced neutral tones to speak in, for the time being. Most humans do not practice hemotyping, presumably due to the lacking diversity in blood class. But your race has varied blood colour. Yes. Then what would yours be? I am a lime blood. <laughs> well, he's got the bright cherry blood, just like you all do. Not that this matters since we are alone here, but interestingly, in ancient troll culture, we would both be considered pariahs. For different reasons, of course. Those of his blood colour were very rare, existing by way of genetic glitch only. They were outcasts, having no place in the social order. On the other hand, those of my blood colour were once actually quite common, but later they were all hunted to extinction. Jeez, why? Details of the genocide are historically murky. It's one of those maddening voids in my understanding of your elaborate epic. But I have speculated their extermination had to do with the extremely powerful abilities they tended to have, and the threat to authority they represented, even more so than the other powerful lowplats. Are you saying you have such powers? Maybe. <laughs> but he does not. He has other... um... traits. Maybe he's jealous of you, which is why there is such resentment? Oh. Probably. He is an outright mess. If you can name a problem with me, he's got it. The way you described it, I had always envisioned your contentious relationship as one played out mostly online. Yes, it is. And also that you and he had never met. Yet, some things you have said lately appear to contradict this? <sighs> Jane, I am sorry, but this is something I just cannot get into. For one thing, we would be creeping way too close to breaking the rules, and then we would all be buggered. Even if I were at liberty to say, it would take so much time to explain everything and I really must be getting to sleep again soon. I am terribly worried about the people of Prospect during such dark times. I understand. Suffice to say, all games that are played have boundaries, a stage to which all pieces and moves are confined. Like a chessboard, there is no reality to the game beyond the edges of the binary grid. That makes sense, but I'm not sure I see how it applies. I know. It was more infernal gammoning on my part as I dance about these rules. It's all one can do when everything he or she ever does is just another move in a game. I am so sorry, Jane. I would have loved to be more forthright with you since the day we first spoke. You are a dear friend to me. You and your chums. You are all the only friends I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> I was planning on giving you a gift. You were? Yes, but I was going to wait until completing my quest before sending it to you. But now that things are looking rather bleak here, I may have to consider accelerating the delivery. What is it? Or is it a surprise? It is a surprise. But I will tell you this much. It is my juju. It is very dear to me. Your juju? A talisman of sorts, with many curious properties and rules for implementation. As you may have gathered about me, I have learned the hard way that it always pays to follow the rules. <laughs> Where did you get it? It was an heirloom, you could say. Passed on from ancestors. I have always had it. Jujus are said to have origins which are impossible to understand or trace. Some say they emerge spontaneously from the void. They cannot be truly duplicated. If there ever appears to be more than one of the same, it is only a mirage of causality. Nor can they ever be destroyed. Not completely, at least. So when I send you mine, it'll be no small matter. It will not simply be copied through alchemy. You will be the new owner, and mine here will cease to exist. Um... Gosh... 
But unfortunately, it will have no value to you unless I send my brother's Juju as well, and he will not relinquish control of his unless I best him at our game. This is another of our rules. It sure sounds like you two are up to your necks in this crazy game. Oh yes, we are up to quite a bit further than our neck in it. But it's alright. I love games. My brother, on the other hand. Not such a big fan of games? Oh no, quite the contrary. His passion for games transcends any human understanding of love. For you to understand it would be to fully comprehend the meaning of... How to put it? Um... Beauty? Horror. You, you. Jeer Dirk. <laughs> Hello, Dirk! Guess what I want to play? That's right, a game! Not now. Dirk, I want to play a game! Dirk! Hello, Dirk! Let's play a game! I'm busy. Dirk, I don't think you understand! I want to play a fucking game with you! I would like you to draw me some pornography! Man. Does it look like he can draw anything for you right now? Who cares? I'm not talking to you! So what exactly is the game this time? To gauge his ability to draw naked people while fighting robots? The game is to produce some vile smut that will bring me erotic enjoyments. And if he doesn't? Then someone dies, fucker! I see. Do you want me to draw some? No! You are an imposter! An artificial, bloodless, hemotyping fraud! What? There is no heart that beats inside you with passion for illustrated debauchery, as can be said of true men. You are as false as the red you paint your words with. Your lies are as red as the herring you represent. I guess these burns are pretty sick. They are burns, right? It seems you may have just called me a fish. Your atrocious tale is full of so many shitty red herrings. And you are the shittiest, by far. Oh look, this man is not what he appears to be. Or is he? No, he's glasses. The mystery is solved. Who gives a fuck? It seems like you don't even know what a red herring is. Bullshit. I am basically the master of all red herrings. They swim through my veins, this way and that. You have to be very good at red herrings when you're as good at games as me. How does one even be, quote, good at red herrings, unquote? Are you saying you employ misdirection effectively? Because I have to say, dude, this has not been my observation. That's a fucking laugh! You know the game I want to play? With the real Dirk? It is such a perfect shitty twist ending! Oh wait, I remember this. Last year, you messaged Dirk, bugging him to play one of your dumb porno games. You said you tried to get him to play in the future, but he was busy fighting drones. And you kept going on about the shitty twist ending to your game. Boring lies from the red lines. You are bad at games, and a game is exactly what I want to play. Dirk, I want to play a game. God damn it. Hello, Dirk, let's play a game. The game will not involve the red lines. Do you hear me? He's tuning you out, bro. I'm telling you, if you want to play a game with him, you'll have to do it in the past. Okay, it's a pretty good idea. Ah! You, you. Gia past Dirk. Hello, Dirk in the past. Let's play a game. All right. Do not even fuck with me. I want to play a game with you, and a game is exactly that which will be played between us. I said I'd play. Dirk, I want you to draw me some pornography. You got it. If you fail to draw me some pornography, there will be consequences. And when consequences happen, that is when blood begins to flow. Your future self spends all his time being in the future. He prioritizes being in the future and fighting drones over playing my games. 
Your past self should consider the costly indiscretion of your future self's behavior. Behavior which entails being in the future almost as much as not doing whatever I fucking tell him to! Dude, I'm sitting here with my stylus ready to go. Do you want me to draw you some porn or not? Oh yes! You will draw me my pornography dirt, human strider. I will have my pound of smut! Hmm. I'm waiting. Or I will murder my sister. Gotcha. What'll it be? She will be dead, and I will rejoice with the liveliest little jig you ever saw. Her putrid harlequin slime will leak from her wounds and soak her ugly yellow robe, and her body will become a stupid corpse. Her moon body, I mean. It will mark the beginning, at least, of my ultimate victory in this game between us. Between me and her, not me and you. Derek, let's play a game! Dude, listen, I am perfectly willing to draw you some pornography. It doesn't need to be part of a game. You don't gotta murder nobody. I will if you don't do what I say! How very ironic that a life hangs in the balance upon your willingness to draw me some pornography. The very pornography which you have spent a lifetime drawing in your spare time because you presumably enjoy doing so. How is that ironic? Oh yes, how ironic it is indeed. And it is further ironic that this game is ironic. It is the very irony which you yourself have spent a lifetime wallowing in and using to justify interests and behaviors which are dumb and confusing. Whoa, mindfuck. Seriously, should I just start drawing naked people or what? Uh, naked people? Yeah, naked people doing it and stuff. You know, porn. Oh, no, 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 no. Awful, horrible, boff, no. Fuck that noise. There will be no nudity or whatever unpleasant behavior that passes for procreative exercise among your people. What I have in mind is so much more scandalous. Awesome. Lay it on me. I would like you to draw, in various pairings, you and your friends, involving each other in assorted debasements. Sure. That doesn't bother me a bit. Sounds totally great. Hot, even. Good! Good! Let the unsavory hotness begin! Who do I start with? How about the Jane human? Right. One crocker coming up. Who else? Let's say... you! <laughs> oh, yes! No problem. Which assorted debasement did you have in mind for us? You will depict the Jane human on the receiving end of... one of your human kisses. Uh, okay. I mean, are you sure you want me to go there? Shut your mouth and fucking draw! Just making sure. Man, seriously gonna have to sterilize my tablet after this. Okay, how's that? Oh no! What is that? What the fuck is your hand doing? Explain yourself! I don't know. Cop a little feel, I guess. Just adding some sizzle to the steak. What's the big? Remove that! Come on, dude, don't be like that. Remove the amorous human limb at once! Do it now! I'll kill her! I will fucking do it! Fine. There. Ah! Yes! Oh, ho, ho. oh yes, that is dirty! You are a man who likes his tepid ass porn. I will give you that. Make her say, you are beautiful. Done. Yes! Good! And now make the kiss Happen with both of the human lips, touching together, and much closer to the screen, to see the action better, and tell her that she is darling to you. Okay. Fuck! Ah, yes! What now? There will be new actors in this vulgar exhibition. 
You will include the Jake and Roxy humans now, and it will be similarly disgusting. You got it. Which steamy adult activities would you like me to convey this time? Make the Roxy human stroke his hair. She needs him as a romantic partner, emotionally. You have a filthy mind, but okay. Here. Good! I want to see longing in his eyes. Make there be longing. Do it! Ah, ha, ha. So good! Have them execute the human maneuver you call the hug. Oh, damn! That is just so nasty! I'm sweating profusely, FYI. Gonna have Square Rave track down a towel soon. Now have the Jake human say, Oh God! I feel so utterly obscene even typing this! <laughs> Fuck! My cheeks are probably bright red right now! Typing what? Make him say, I love you! On it. That is... So fucked up! <laughs> I can hardly stand it! It's so fucked up, bro! I agree. All kinds of things wrong with this scenario here. She wants the human marry him now! Make the bitch say she wants the human marry that fucker! Stand by. He says yes! He says fucking yes this instant, you wretched pile of shit! Fuck! That shit is so... Tender. You know it. Slow cook to fucking perfection. I would like them to copulate off screen. They will bear a child in the unseemingly human manner, but you will depict none of the off-putting details of the ritual. Show them experiencing human wedded joy with their offspring. Now! Yeah, give me a minute. Okay. Now! This isn't as good. It's not as titillating as I desire. Have the male eat the child. So, are we done? You would love that, wouldn't you? Nah, I'm fine with doing more if you want. How convenient it would be for you if we stopped playing my game and let my sister off the hook. Do you want me to pretend I don't want to play? Like, is that part of the kink for you? Kind of a role-playing thing? Shut the fuck up! No, no, please. Don't make me draw any more pics of my friends snuggling and stuff, Strider said, having spent the better part of the night gnawing through his duct tape gag. Look at these pathetic stalling tactics, as if I don't know an attempt to derail one of my diabolical games when I see one. That's good. Keep seeing things like that. I'll keep doing my part. Somebody's saving from this living nightmare the things he's made me do. Maybe your irreverence for my game stems from the fact that you don't give a flying fuck about my idiot sister. Ha! Like I could even blame you. What a cloying windbag shrew. She's worthless to everybody. I think you think so too. You know, you're an alright guy for a monstrous fuck-up leagues beneath me in every way that exists. Dirk, I want to play a game. Do you now? Though you may not care about my sister's life, there is something which may motivate you to keep playing, and that is curiosity. How so? <laughs> you see that right there? You asked the question. Asking shit is what being curious means. I fucking win already, you trash! Damn. Owned. But that's what you do when you have a shitty twist ending planned at the end of all of your games. See? This game has a twist. It is twisted like a little candy swirl that is a kiss on your face from an angel while you make a fucking fool of yourself in your sleep. I know what a twist is. Or I did until you kept saying stupid shit that doesn't mean anything. Exactly. If you want to know my shitty twist, you have to keep playing my game. Well, not only was I pretty psyched to keep playing regardless, I'd rather do just about anything than listen to you ramble on and on about your horseshit twists. 
Very good. The lecherous amusements. They will now involve the both Jane and Roxy humans. Cool. Ah, oh, yes. Double the tasty bitches. Getting a little maudlin together? Uh, okay. They are in the mood for sweets. Just like me. I like candy. Do you like candy, Dirk? I guess. What about cotton candy? I never tried it. The shithole planet doesn't have any. It is so fluffy and melts in your mouth. Blue and pink get between my jaws. Poofy, fluffy cotton candy. Let me dissolve you. That is what I call this pairing of nasty premium bitches. You know, considering you're obviously just going to ask for more ultra-tame shit, you still somehow made this legitimately creepy. Nicely done, I guess? Ah, yes! How you squirm now! I'm not squirming. Like bullfuck you aren't! Now draw! I'm already drawing. What should I make these premium bitches do? <sighs> Nothing just yet. We will not be so reckless with their courtship. They take things slow. We milk this fucker and make its teat our bitch. It will be delicious. Okay. So they're just... standing there? One of them is shy and reluctant to advance. Jane! The Jane human is reluctant and shy. You will render the Jane human as showing a bashful and coquettish demeanor. I don't know how someone draws that, though. I'm not a fucking artist. You're the artist. Make that happen. And make it perfect. Not a problem. Okay. Oh! Look at her! She has her eye on that romantically desirable bitch. Oh, what she would say to her if she could summon the nerve. Maybe she wants to ask her out? Shut up! I'm running this! Now! The Roxy human takes the initiative in the encounter. She places her beverage on the floor, she saunters up the chain, and perpetrates one of your human winks. She keeps her fucking hand to herself, you presumptuous tool! Erase that! Now! And now, the Roxy human opens her heart and professes her feelings. The bitch tells the other bitch a poem. Make the bitch say a poem. Do it. Sure. Damn. Oh, damn. <laughs> Look at her. She's eating that shit up. Give the bitch a rose. Okay. Wait. Which one? No, wait. Both bitches give each other a fucking rose. Yes. Yes! Now make her... make her do the thing. The shameful thing where she rubs the rose on her face. Y you know, the human practice, whereby poignant emotions are conducted through facial tissue, as channeled through the stem of a fragrant plant. Draw that shit! Make her sing! The Jane human sings. While still doing that, her sultry partner glistens with emotional perspiration dollops. <laughs> oh, mercy! That is just so grody. Does your sister even know you're into this sappy shipping stuff? You berate her constantly for everything, and I know she likes to write and illustrate rom fix and the like. No, she enjoys it for wrong and disgusting reasons. Her fascination with the red stirrings of inferior races, it strikes me as too sincere and therefore repellent. My enjoyment is ironic. Again, you just don't seem to know what ironic means. Your enjoyment of this content is clearly sincere. You're just fetishizing your disgust for it is all. Fuck you with that assessment! You don't tell me of what value the pornography has to me in my own game! You just fucking draw and don't talk! I'm just saying it's an interest you have in common. If you told her you liked her romantic artwork, maybe you could bond over that? Bonding is the last fucking thing we need to do. 
I have not told her of my ironic fascinations, and you will not either. I will not tell her that I secretly peruse her work in a state of petrified mortification for hours, and neither will you. Fair enough. So, game over yet? <laughs> no! As I said before, these steamy, bothered-up bitches are hungry for sweets. The Jane human has baked the cake. And? The Jane human has baked a cake. Okay. Ah, oh, fuck! Those bitches eyeball that luscious confection. It's moist as shit. It tempts them. They begin to human salivate. The mutually swooning bitches get frisky with the treat. Roxy human chops out a wedge, feeds it to Jane human's zealous snack hall. Okay. But not so fast. She smushes it around the greedy cake slut's human lips and features. Misguided feelings of fondness and levity wax incrementally. A giggle is released. Oh shit, things are really heating up now. Yes! Fuck yes! I want them to human hold hands! They will human hold hands now! Their odious love is blossoming before our eyes. And to our unspeakable dismay, can you feel it, Dirk? Yes. Make their cakey hands become clasped together as one. It feels mushy and slippery. They enjoy the sensation immensely. It is vile. Yes! Closer! Get the fucking camera closer, you douchebag! I want to see some detail. High def that sticky mess! Oh, fuck! That is just downright perfectionist! Yeah, those girls sure are digging each other. That's how we humans roll. Eat some cake, hold some hands. Ah, but their tawdry romp is far from over. Jane has had a little too much cake to eat. Perhaps her human tummy needs to rub? Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, God. What's this? Could it be? Your breaking point is in sight? You are becoming squeamish. I can feel it. Yes! Yes! If you think this is making me uncomfortable, think again. No, I'll think only once. You are succumbing to my game. You are becoming psychologically unglued and I am winning. Nice wishful thinking there. I'm not even merely tolerating this, bro. I swear to God, I'll get my own horse running harder in this fucking race than you could ever dream. What? Horse? Think I'll blink first, motherfucker? Not happening. I might splinter, but I don't break. Oh, whatever, asshole. Is that supposed to be cool? You want a fucking tummy rub? That shit sounds white hot. I can't wait to draw that and guess both sexually stimulated. Here I goddamn go. Boners galore. This is giving me the biggest male human boner of my entire erection life. Stop mentioning male human boners! I don't even know what those are, and I don't want to! So if that was the plan all along, to mention boners, your plan fucking sucked! You want a shitty twist? Okay, we're done here. This game is over. Aw, oh, that's it? I thought we were getting into a good rhythm there. Anyway, you missed out on like half the pairings. What? Half? No, we did most of them, didn't we? No, we did three. And there are three possible matchups left. Don't you know anything about shipping science? That's a thing? How the fuck could that be a thing? Believe me, it's a thing. Total number of pairings for a group of n people is n to the second power minus n divided by 2. You divide by 2 to cut the grid in half. Eliminate duplicate pairs. Minus n is so you don't pair people up with themselves. That wouldn't make sense. And why the fuck not? Well, because... I don't know. Maybe you're right. Maybe I was being closed-minded about self-pairing. What do I know? 
jack shit, obviously. Anyway, fuck all that. You don't spoil good debauchery with a lot of stupid math. You may think you're smart, but excessive smartness can make you be more of an idiot. Intelligent idiocy can be easily exploited by the cunning and ruthless. Just a tip for you, bro. I'll make a note. So you sure you don't want even one more drawing? You used Jane and Rotsy in two pairings, but me and Jake only got one. How is that fair? I decide what is fair in my games. If you are proposing to illustrate the Jake human behaving amorously with the Dirk human, the answer is no. Why not? That encounter does not seem as reprehensibly scandalous. First of all, I ask of you, where are the bitches at? Mm? I rest my case. Lame. Second of all, I do not wish to languish in the pumpkin patch. What? Orange and emerald, unpleasant together. I have no taste for pumpkins or any horrid vegetable matter. Meat or candy, that's what's good. The game is over. Fine. I'll keep all my illustrated debasements to myself then. Good. Do that. Okay, I will. So did I win? I will say... Yes! You were cooperative and generally enthused about my game. Congratulations, Dirk! Thanks. So what's the shitty twist? Ah! But not so fast! You see, there is a twist to my shitty twist! A twisted twist? Like a double Mobius handjob or something? Yes! Probably! Okay, what is the twist to the twist? The twist to the twist is... I won't tell you what the shitty twist is for a year! Wow. That... really is quite a shitty twist. Your gratification on this matter will be delayed. I have noticed, as your awful meandering saga wins its way through the ass crack of nowhere and back, answers to pointless questions are often deferred, nigh indefinitely. And so this will cause you to reflect upon a lifetime spent being inside a bullshit story like that. Is the irony not fucking delicious? Not really. I will tell you the fate of my sister in one year. At that time, I will tell you the twist. And although you played my game successfully in order to spare her life, it will have turned out all along to your shock and astonishment that... You, you. Dear future, Dirk. That... You, you. Reveal shitty twist. I already killed her! <laughs> what? Killed who? All oh, right. I forgot about this horse shit. <laughs> and the great thing is how I got the idea from your game. What idea? The idea to kill her dream self? To get the arch agent to do it, to get him to go to Prospect and knife a bitch. Since, as you must know, a Durst guy can't just go flying across the medium. It's against the rules. So, I hired him. How? I paid him off with candy. Every man has his price when it comes to sweets. Although, he was probably willing to do it even without the bribe. Noir is the best there is. Very useful. Very stabby. I might even consider him my best fucking friend if I didn't find the human emotion of friendship nearly as sickening as it barely qualifies as an actual emotion. Basically, what I'm saying is I'm yet another step closer to being in total control of the new game I am about to play and the old game between us. Wait. What game between us? No! Not you and me! Us! Her and me! Me and her! 
There are only a few moves left before I can mate with her. Wow. Wait, fuck. What did I say? I mean, before I can mate her. Mate, as in checkmate? It's a figure of goddamn speech. You know, like in chess. No, what's that? Shithead, 